Good morning. It's uh, 9 a.m. here in San Diego, so we will start the, the webinar. Uh, today's webinar is on the subject of protein structure and crystallographic analysis tools within the ICM software. My name is Andrew Ori, and I'm a senior, senior scientist here at Molsoft. So if you have any questions after the, the webinar, please feel free to email or call. Uh, during the webinar, you can use the uh, text messaging panel, and I can try to answer them during the webinar or I'll get to answer them at the end. You can also raise your hand at the end and I can open your audio and I can listen to your question if it's a bit compl more complicated. Uh, you can follow uh, Molsoft on Twitter and Facebook and in, on YouTube there are repositories of old, older webinars um, and webinars from the previous weeks in this series. So you can catch up there. Most of the Things we show today are included in ICM Browser, which is our free software, which is free free download, and um, ICM Browser Pro, which is a, a, a low-cost uh, upgrade to ICM Browser. Uh, but everybody who attends the workshop um, can get a 30-day a key for um, ICM Pro, which is our main desktop modeling software, which includes docking and homology modeling and screening and stuff like that. So, uh, today's key topics are the structure analysis tools. Uh, we're going to load in a PDB file and then build a full atom molecular ICM object. So you can uh, look at hydrogen bonds, you can look at um, electrostatic surfaces, uh, interactions and things like that. We're going to see how to measure distances and angles, how to build fully interactive Ramachandran plots, how to calculate uh, protein RMSD, and how to calculate uh, contact and surface areas. So most of those things are, are in the free ICM browser. Uh, for the crystallographic analysis tools, you'll need the ICM Browser Pro, uh, which contains uh, tools for generating crystallographic neighbors and electron density contouring. Can I just check the sound is working OK? If uh, you could let me know by chat, chat that would be helpful. Thank you. Great, <laughs> thanks. I just had somebody who said it wasn't working. Great, so you have ICM software. You may wonder, what does ICM mean? Well, ICM stands for Internal Coordinate Mechanics, which is the, the underlying basis of our software. So one major problem of any modeling software is the size of the modeling system, maybe many thousands of atoms. The, so by using internal coordinates, IC, this substantially reduces the number of variables defining the system. So you, most other software, they use uh, Cartesian coordinates, so you have three variables per atom, x, y, and z. Uh, internal coordinates, we use uh, bond lengths, uh, planar angles, and uh, the torsion angles uh, instead. But we assume when we're modeling that bond lengths and planar angles are generally rigid, so in normal conditions they're, they're kept rigid, rigid, and so we're only looking at the, the way the torsion angles change. So this has application in protein folding, protein modeling, docking, and virtual screening. And you can read the classic paper in 1994 by Ruben Abagayan, the Molsoft uh, founder, and Max Totroff, who's our principal scientist. I can provide that paper if you want to read more details. So uh, when we convert to an ICM object, uh, we read in the PDB. The PDB structure doesn't have any hydrogen, so we need to add hydrogens, first of all, to, to that uh, structure. Uh, and then uh, we need to try and fix things that the crystallographer hasn't been able to uh, see uh, because the electron density doesn't show it too well. So one of those things is, for example, is histidines. So uh, this is what the crystallographer would see in the electron density. And he, he or she needs to be able to, uh, we wouldn't be able to determine which the orientation at the heavy atom level just from the electron density. So often the uh, chi 2 angle needs to be corrected by 180 degrees. And there's also uncertainty at the, for, for histidines, for example, there's uncertainty at the protonation level. So you need to decide which of the three confirmations is correct. So when you read in the PDB and you convert to an ICM object, uh, one of the things uh, you can choose to do is to optimize histidines. There's an option in the conversion, which we'll show. So the problem is orientation and protonation states are frequently wrong in the PDB and need to be fixed to ensure correct docking results of your docking or 
analysis. Um, and the way we work, we use this is that we maximize the uh, number of hydrogen bonds and other interactions with the rest of the protein and or with the ligand. The other uh, problem is for um, residues such as glutamines and asparagine side chains, uh, the heavy atom, the orientation at the heavy atom level is that the two conformations shown, these two give very similar electron density. So we need to be able to discriminate between these two uh, conformations of the asparagine side chain. The same ambiguity needs to be resolved for the chi 3 angle of glutamine as well. So once again, um, in the IC, when you convert to an icing object, there's an, there's an option to, uh, to correct, uh, to optimize the hydrogen bonding network uh, for the correct orientation of the asparagines and the glutamines. Uh, the next concern would probably be uh, the charges. So generally, we, when you convert an ice cream object, um, you would keep the spartic acid and the charge, the charge residues uh, charged. Uh, so in most cases, they are charged. But in some uh, special cases, uh, they may need to be uncharged. And I'll show you how to do that in, in, in ICM. Uh, one classic example is that what we're going to look at is HIV protease, um, which has two aspartic acids in the in the binding pocket, um, and so one or two may be un may be protonated, uh, depending on the on the ligand in inside it. So let's go to ICM and look at this structure one, IDA. So we. To read in the structure, we go to the PDB search tab and just type 1IDA, and uh, just go no for that. And this loads the structure from the PDB. Uh, we can see we have the two chains for the HIV protease. Um, blue is chain A, and uh, B is uh, yellow is chain B, and the, the ligand is shown in green. So to convert this to an ICM object, so at the moment, if we try and display hydrogens, for example, if we display all wires, we see that there's no, you can use this button here to toggle uh, between the hydrogen display. There's no hydrogens, obviously, because it's, it's, it's directly from the PDB. The resolution's not that, that good. So we're going to add hydrogens. We're going to optimize and to make it to an ICM object. We can do that by right-clicking on the object level here and choose Convert PDB. So when you do that, uh, you get some uh, questions to be to be asked. Um, now, uh, you can delete all the waters when you convert. You can keep tight waters, which means uh, waters that make two, uh, three or four hydrogen bonds between the ligand and the receptor. Or you can keep all waters. Um, for this example, I'm just going to choose keep tight, although I should, there are some key waters actually that um, help to uh, bind the inhibitor, but um, it takes a while, a little bit longer to um, to convert. So I'm just going to choose that, and then you choose the optimized hydrogens, and that will um, improve the hydrogen bonding network. Um, and then, as I as I showed in the slides, you've got the option to um, optimize histidines and asparagines and glutamine residues, and other like cysteines and prolines um, in in special cases where the ligand is bound. Uh, and then you get a choice for replace the original, which will overwrite your X-ray structure, which I'm going to do. Display the result. Hide missing side chains. So if the crystallographer has uh, has uh, shown that there's, um, if, if there's um, occupancy of zero in some of the atoms in the, uh, in the side chain, if you choose hide missing side chains, ICM will not build those full side chains, but if you choose uncheck it, uh, it, will, it will build the full chain for the, the residue. You can assign secondary structure and guess formal charges and ligands uh, and optimize ligand tautomers, but we won't be doing that. We just go OK. And this converts it to an ICM object. And you can see in the, in the terminal window, uh, it gives you information of what it's done. So it gives you some, it's optimized 29 polar hydrogens. Um, it's flipped this glutamine and these asparagines shown here. 
So now if we display in, in wire, we can see the hydrogens are added. And so uh, this subject is now uh, more amenable to, for, for things like building um, good uh, surfaces, uh, for electrostatics, for docking and other, other tools like that. And that's it. So if you want to toggle the hydrogen display, we can just um, go to this button here and just choose polar hydrogens. It makes it a bit clearer. And so uh, if you want to see the hydrogen bonding network for the whole uh, protein, you can just click on the hydrogen bond button here. And that displays the, the hydrogen bonds. You can see that there are 133 hydrogen bonds. And you can toggle them on and off uh, using the buttons, using these uh, buttons here. You can select, you can also select them by double clicking. It will take you to the hydrogen bond of interest. Uh, you can also export this uh, to a table. It gives you all the, the interactions in a nice spreadsheet that you can export to Excel perhaps or something else. So you can export to Excel. So it shows you the, this one is from, this hydrogen bond is from proline 1 to leucine 99. It's got the distance and everything like that. We may just be interested in the hydrogen bonds between the ligand and the receptor. So one convenient way to do that, I'm just going to delete these ones. Delete. There's, if you right click on any ligand, you can just go to pocket and then say ligand pocket interactions and that will give you a clearer uh, indication of the, 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 the ones that are in the, in the region of the pocket and between the ligand and the receptor. If you want to play around with different hydrogen bonding parameters, you can click and hold on the hydrogen bond button in the display tab, and then you can uh, change the color of the spheres. The spheres actually uh, represent the strength, actually. So the thicker, uh, greener uh, spheres are stronger hydrogen bonds. Um, but you can also find weaker hydrogen bonds by changing the hydrogen bond minimum energy, and then remake, re refine, re re remake the hydrogen bonds by clicking on the button and it re, re uh, populate this in the ICM workspace and in the graphics as well. Okay. So uh, we also mentioned that uh, you may need to play around with the charges. Uh, so if we look at the, in this structure, it's going to find find all the charged residues basically. If, I, if we go to the XX button here, so all green buttons are to do with selections. So if we want to find all the charged residues, um, it's quite a useful button because uh, it's, it's got just different tabs. So if you want to find something related to other atoms such as B factor range or something like that or something related to a residue, which I do I want to find the charged residues, um, you can go to secondary structure, select all the helices or select all the beta sheets. But um, I just want to go to the residue tab and choose the charge residues and um, display them. So I can find those two aspartic acids which are quite close together in the in the ligand binding pocket and so one of them is probably likely to be protonated. So if we select those and go, and go close, you see we have the green crosses in the graphics. And we, these, the selection it's made is, is on the backbone, and uh, we may want we will need to propagate that selection to all atoms in each residue. So there's a convenient way to do that. There's an R button here, which will extend that selection out to all the atoms in each of the residues that we've selected, not just the backbone. So now, if we display in wire, uh, we can easily see that. Let me just uh, display it a little bit differently. Display it, display it in stick. You can, it's easier to see. So we have these two aspartic acids that are quite close together. So if you wanted to uh, uncharge this one, uh, it's it's quite a subjective thing because you've got to be careful with the ligand, how the ligand is bound, and it's 
maybe they'll both be uncharged or both be charged uh, one be charged and the other not uh, but to, to do that you can just um, you go right click on the on the on the residue you want to uh, play with and then choose set as part of as a set here and then you can choose neutral or charged so if you go neutral see now it's protonated and um, this is it's no it's uh, so you can modify it back again uh, if you right click uh, you can choose you have to go to advanced and you can flip it back again you can also use this uh, menu for mutations for making you can mutate the residue to a completely different amino acid um, you can mutate it to a an, uh, an amino acid the, an unusual amino acid for example uh, you can also attach modifiers at this point as well. All these things we're going to cover in the next series of um, molecular modeling uh, tools. So, but at the moment we're just looking at visualization. So um, this, these are the options that are available here. And many of these more advanced mutate and um, minimize options are available in the ICM Pro desktop modeling software, which you have, uh, you can get a license for by just email the instruction should have been in the go to meeting um, invite if not just email me uh, so yeah so now we can you can play around with the, the protonation state of that um, residue so now it's converted to an ICM object you can also build electrostatic surfaces for example so you can just select a chain go to meshes choose in this drop down list we have different kind of surfaces which we'll is electrostatics and it will build that surface eventually <laughs> there we go and yeah, see so the just I just made it with one change just for speed um, but you can you toggle the, the check the, the surface on and off in the ICM workspace you see that you get an additional uh, option here which is G for graphical object electrostatics of PDB1 IDA chain A. You can toggle that on and off. Okay. So we also um, going to cover the Ramachandran plot. To make, build a Ramachandran plot, we uh, need to select the structure that we want to analyze. We go to Tools and choose um, Analysis and choose uh, Ramachandran Plot Interactive and this will build uh, some plots for you so you have the sci-fi angles um, plotted on the right hand side here uh, we have different uh, representations the Amiga angles and so here you can uh, select uh, the re a, re a residue by single clicking it will take you directly to that uh, residue in the in the structure you can make more than one selection so you could select all the residues here and it will take you to those to those residues so it's also so you could you've also got a table on the left hand side with the actual numbers for the five side and the Amiga angles. So that's the Ramachandran plot. These can be um, exported as images. You right click on the here and say save image. Um, or copy image to clipboard and you copy and paste into PowerPoint. Okay, so that's the Ramachandran plot. So now we're going to look at uh, measuring distances and angles and uh, contact areas so we'll go back to double click here and center if we were interested in the distance between those two um, aspartic acids in the, in the pocket uh, we can to measure a distance we need to go to the display tab here and you choose the the button here which says which distance between two atoms you single click and then you can see your 
uh, cursor changes to a, a finger. So you can point at an atom and then click on one atom and measure in distance to another. Okay, so this one is uh, 2.6 angstrom difference. So now you can see we have another option in the 3D labels and this one is shown here so you can right click and you can choose different representations. You can say ball, um, you may want to change the font, you can edit the font and choose um, larger font and the color and uh, just going to get rid of that picker ball. So that displays the, the distance. Uh, you can also do this on the command line as well. Uh, that, that, the command line is a, is a different uh, <laughs> webinar. But um, if you want to learn it, you just for example, um, the, the, what, what we just did has been um, placed into the terminal window, so you can learn the command line to do it uh, by just looking at the graphics and then seeing what comes out in the terminal. Uh, so to measure angles, um, we can uh, select uh, so like three, three atoms, it will display the angle. You can see now that we have another uh, category in the 3D labels uh, section in the ICM workspace here called angle list and in a similar way you can play around with the coloring and the um, fonts and things like that. Um, right, so, uh, torsion angles, uh, once again you click on the button for the torsion angles and um, you can select four atoms and the torsion angle will be displayed here and once again we've got a new uh, section called torsion list and we can play around with the font you can change your default settings so it'd be larger uh, by default um, so this is the angle the torsion angle here Okay, so that's, uh, you can also select an atom and let me just, so if you select one atom and then you can use this button to find or display the distances within three angstroms or whatever this number here is set for to, from, from this atom outwards. So if you click here uh, and you found one, if we extend the You can see that now we can we have it automatically finds all the distances between within five angstroms of this um, atom. Okay, so for contact areas, we as a convenient way to do that, uh, or just to find contact in general between, for example, the the inhibitor. So in this HIV protease, we have an inhibitor bound, the green green ligand. It's going to um, delete all the, you can delete all the labels by right clicking here and just say delete. So to find the, it's going to undisplay or stick, just to clean it up and display the inhibitor. So the inhibitor is displayed and um, you can now uh, look at the uh, contacts. So I just had a question actually about um, can you move the distance label. Uh, yes, you can. Um, you need to. I didn't show it because it's a little bit tricky, but I'll try it um, here. So, um, in theory, yeah. If you use the, hopefully you can see that. If you use the middle mouse button, you can sort of grab hold of the the label and shift it. Um, so you need a, a, a mouse with a middle mouse button and you just find the, the uh, correct, it's got a little handle on it and you can shift it around 
um, that way. Like this. So, yeah, you can use the middle mouse to, to shift it. Okay, so um, it's going to delete those labels. And then, um, so just find what residues make contact with the uh, ligand. A convenient way is just to select the ligand and then go tools um, and analysis and then choose uh, contact areas. And uh, we have one selection, so we just go one selection. It's asking us uh, what you want to see the contacts with. It's with our selection, or you could use the uh, ICM command language to choose it. Um, then it will scale the sticks surrounding the residues surrounding the uh, ligand, depending on how much contact it's making. And so you just go OK. And so now you get all the key, the key side chains. Uh, you can see that this uh, this residue is thicker, so it's making more contact with the ligand. And uh, you get a table with contact area and exposed area and the percent of buried, how, how buried uh, that residue is. And also the closest distance to the, to the ligand as well. So you can sort this table by single clicking. All these tables can be exported to Excel. And uh, they are all fully interactive as well, I think. Yeah, so if you double click, um, it'll take you to those, to that residue. You see a selection here, um, which is the biggest one. That's this aspartic acid. So if you double click, it takes you to that structure. So if you on display, you have the these two shown. Okay, so those are contact areas. So we will move on to um, we will move on to how to superimpose structures for analysis. So and and calculate RMSD. So I'm just going to delete delete what I've made here. And then in the examples, they go to file and open examples and the uh, file we want is called example alignment and we'll probably be using this next week during the ICM bioinformatics session because it has the sequence alignment but we have two kinases here they're not superimposed uh, there are a number of different ways to superimpose the easiest way is to just use your right click mouse button and drag over the structures and then um, there's a superimpose button here. You just single click and it superimposes. And it superimposes anything you want, basically. So if you can see this alpha C part of the kinase, this, this helix here, we could select it in the alignment. We'll go over the alignment next week. Um, this selection is propagated to 3D. So now if we go to the superimpose button, it will superimpose the region you selected. You can also select the, or you could select the um, ATP binding pocket, just um, manually like that, and then do superimpose, go OK, and then it's superimposed on the binding pocket. And then superimpose this loop, you just select that loop and you just go click and that should be that's superimposed. OK. But um, you may want to be more specific about how you superimpose. So um, this is just a convenient tool that's in the graphics. Uh, if you want to go to, and then if you look in the terminal window, it will spit out the, the RMSD um, value. Uh, let me find. Uh, yeah, it gives a, it gives different um, 
I'll show you in a second. So if we, if we also go to, to go to tools and then superimpose, there's some different options here. So if we select the, the chains we want to superimpose, you can use control to select uh, non-contiguous. Uh... Yeah, I had a question about um, the, yeah, the alignments we will cover next week. So uh, I'll, I'll hold off talking about alignments until then uh, so we can carry on with this. Um, but thanks for the questions. Um, so we superimposed those two structures and uh, or we can go to tool, tools and then superimpose and you have different options. So two proteins gives you, if you want to superimpose just to see alpha atoms, you can apply and then it reports the RMSD, which I think is, you have to place, uh, it's R out, yeah. So the R out gives um, the RMSD of, so you can script this to, to calculate RMSD for many hundreds of structures you could read in, convert, you know, superimpose and calculate um, uh, these. It's easy to write a, a for loop uh, to, to, to go through a lot of structures. I can send you example scripts um, if, if you want to do this in high throughput. Um, there's also other tools. Um, so in tools, uh, superimpose uh, proteins to uh, protein oh, just did that one proteins by you can use backbone atoms you can go here proteins by 3d uh, choose backbone and um, you can weight it by uh, sequence alignment and, and other ways of uh, superimposing the structures but the the option in the display tab is probably the more convenient one and it always asks you which one you want to be static and it superimposes this one onto that one. So superimpose is, is done. As one superimpose option which we won't cover today but we will do in a future webinar is um, how to superimpose uh, po pockets which have no uh, sequence similarity or even necessarily structural similarity but they do have a pharmacophoric similarity i.e. they bind the same ligand types because uh, they have the same uh, pharmacophoric properties so you can superimpose sites by 3d pharmacophores which we will cover at another date there's an online tutorial if you're interested in looking at that I can show you the way show you that okay so other structure analysis tools um, you need to be aware obviously about occupancies uh, B factors and alternative uh, confirmations of some residues uh, so gloss uh, just if you're unfamiliar with these terms, uh, the B factor is like a temperature factor. Um, it's the mean square displacement of atom from its position in the model, and you see normal range maybe five to fifty uh, range. Uh, occupancy is the fraction of daylight atomic density at a given centre. If there are two equally occupied conformers, both will have occupancies of 0.5. Um, range is zero to one, and um, in some high resolution structures you may also see alternative confirmations of certain side chains which we'll show in a bit. But how to color by um, occupancy and and B factor. So if we look at these uh, this structure to color this um, structure by B factor we can click and hold on any representation that's currently displayed and just choose color by and then choose uh, B factor. And then you can see, if we go to the labels tab, we have a, a rainbow. So we can see that uh, sort of bluey purple is going to be a, a very low B factor. And when you get to maybe the more uh, flexible regions, like this glycine rich loop here, it goes to green where the B factor increases a little bit um, in this glycine rich loop, this kinase and this helix here. So you can, you can show them. I had a question about... Um, Uh, had a question actually <laughs> had a comment that uh, this fog button yeah the fog button is yeah it would be better to choose the fog button in, when you're using go to meeting it's pretty clear if um, you choose the fog because it's um, uh, you can toggle it on and off um, yeah I had another question I can get back to some of the other questions later um, 
later on. So um, yeah, you can also color other representations by uh, B factor, um, occupancy. Uh, if there's zero, uh, if you if ICM has built the side chain, uh, then it will it will show that that uh, the occupancy was zero, and we built some atoms of that uh, region that we're we're showing. Up. Okay, so the alternative confirmations. Uh, so for for very high resolution structures, um, some key residues have two alternative confirmations provided. Here's one example. Um, it's the fatty acid binding protein with steric acid bound. It's one entry one HMT. So if I'm just going to delete everything and go to search and search one HMT. And there's a couple in this high resolution structure. So this is it's very nice because it gives an indication of uh, flexibility within the uh, pocket. So one of the residues that has uh, multiple confirmations, alternative confirmations, is uh, valine 32. So we can select it here in the IC, uh, ICM workspace. And we zoom in to that region. If we display it, you can see that uh, we've got two confirmations of this valine. So uh, this is the A, the first one that's listed. And you can see that it has B for the other one here in the ICM command line. Um, so you could make two objects, one with the B and one with the A. Um, if you don't, if you don't delete them, then it would ICM by default chooses the the first one uh, A. But um, if you're docking to this region and you want to have multiple receptor confirmations, uh, what you could do is um, clone this PDB structure. You right click choose clone and then you would delete um, you call it uh, then you would just delete the you can right click on the atom and select uh, and, and choose um, delete delete atom and you can you could have two versions of that of that structure if you wanted to okay Right, uh, let's go on the next slide. Uh, crystallographic symmetry. Right, so uh, we're moving on to the crystallographic side of stuff as well now. Um, so uh, if you read in some crystal structures, uh, the problem is that it doesn't um, give the full symmetrical molecule. So you might see this, uh, for example, ligand here, and you think, how, how does that, this bind to this protein? It's like hanging in the air. The reason why it binds is because it has a symmetry-related subunit. How to generate that symmetry subunit? It's um, quite quick in ICM. You can we have an example here, one CDG. So the problem is the true pocket is formed by multiple chains, uh, but the multiple chains are not explicitly represented in the PDB file. So you need to calculate the symmetry related subunit. So to do that, we're reading this example of um, one CDG. So, so again, I'll delete all and go one CDG and it asks me for an update. No. Okay. So here we have the, uh, the protein that, and you can see that the, this ligand, which is, I showed in the slide, is hanging in space. And why is it hanging in space? We'll see. It's not really. It's actually, if we go to tools and then choose crystallographic neighbor. And so you go tools, and then sorry, X-ray, and then crystallographic neighbor, and then you can generate the crystallographic neighbor around this um, this site. Actually, you can do the whole you can do the whole protein quite quickly, I think. And uh, you'll see that we get another op um, object um, here with the neighbors, the crystallographic neighbors. So you can uh, toggle these on and off, or you can build the whole chain as well, it just for speed. I, I just chose uh, fragments of the, the chain. Okay. 
yes yeah, so um if you want yeah, i had a question uh yeah the question i'll get back to those um questions later i think um so that's the crystallographic uh, subunit crystallographic neighbor sorry as well um so there's some other examples you can maybe play around with um, so, for example, um, in two weeks' time, we'll be looking at uh, trying to identify ligand binding pockets. So, for if you haven't generated the crystallographic um, neighbors, then you're not going to find the pocket either. So, it's another thing to consider. And also, it's useful to build sometimes to build the full biomolecule. So, for example, for a virus, uh, generally um, only one instance of the capsid protein is actually deposited in the PDB. So, you need to to generate the full um, the full biomolecule. Uh, this takes a little bit of time to run, and um, but a nice example is actually, uh, for example, hemoglobin, which is a tetramer. So if you read hemoglobin in from the PDB, uh, you will only get uh, one, maybe one sub one molecule. So you need to be able to build the full biomolecule for that structure. So let's just do that. That's a relatively quick example. Uh, 2HBC is the hemoglobin. And we know hemoglobin is a tetramer, but you read it in from the PDB, and it's not shown in the tetramer form. So to generate the tetramer, you would double-click on the um, structure, and then go to Tools, um, X-ray again, and generate Biomolecule Generator. And it generates the, uh, the another object here. Oh. Sorry. So um, right. it didn't generate it. Yeah. So it should um, it should generate the the, the full uh, tetrameric complex. Or you could build you could try it with a um, a, a capsid protein and generate the full virus. As well, but anyway, the, if the biomolecule information is in the PDB, then uh, you go to Tools, X-ray Biomolecule Generator. And finally, for the the last uh, thing, uh, we're going to look at the contouring of electron density, and see so you can see what the crystallographer has um, identified. So uh, it's going to delete. Here, if we read in one XBB, which is uh, the um, which is a kinase with a Gleevec bound, we can so we read the PDB structure. We can read in the electron density map, and we can contour it. So we go to read to do that. Uh, we go to Tools, X-ray, and get electron density map, and then you enter the PDB code, and it will download the map from the PDB. And so if we display in uh, black, you can see the map. So the map as it is, is, is not much use for um, visualization purposes. So it'd be nice to be able to contour that map. So you can contour the whole map if you wanted to, or you can contour a selection. So you just double click on a ligand, and um, you go to Tools, X-ray, and then you can contour the map. Uh, in that option here and go OK and now if we zoom into that selection we can see it's contoured and you can see that the, the crystallographer has seen the, the bulk of this ligand pretty well uh, but this, uh, this group here on the outside is uh, there's very little electron density for that region so when you're docking it may not go uh, in that particular confirmation but it's worth checking um, checking these things if you if you're docking to this region or if you're modeling it's, it's a good idea to be able to download the, uh, the the maps and then see the quality of the structure around your region of interest so um, we can select neighbors that's going you can display the the other chains inside the density there's different contouring then levels as well um, by default you can use plus and minus here to, to go through different you can see a little bit more density for this um, that's a higher contouring level 
Okay, so that's contouring and uh, um, reading electron density maps. So uh, I have some questions that have come through the text, but um, please feel free to, to continue asking them. I'll try and get through them. Um, then next uh, webinar coming up is on uh, protein structure alignment, how to build alignment, how to uh, how to interactively uh, to build them with 3D structures so you can uh, identify regions of conservation, how to plot con con uh, the sequence alignment conservation onto surfaces and uh, that's such like. And then the final um, webinar in the series is how to identify ligand binding pockets and allosteric sites in 3D molecules. Okay, so I had some questions about some other tools. Um,